On to our first speaker for the day. This is my beautiful friend, uh, Esther, that I'm gonna introduce you to. And I met Esther when I went to Rwanda last November. And it was such a beautiful, pleasant surprise because I, I didn't know about Esther before I went to Rwanda, but after a church service, um, she came over and she just gave me the biggest hug. And her and I connected in a way that uh, I don't connect with every person in this world, but I certainly connected with uh, Esther. And she's just one of the uh, dearest people to me in the world. Her story is amazing. I had no idea what her story was that day when I first met her. Um, I just gave her this big hug and had a conversation and learned about how inspiring uh, this young woman was. And it was later in the week that I visited her home and I got to hear her story and learn about her life. And so I'm going to let her share that um, with you. I'm going to make sure I unmute this. Can you unmute yourself, um, uh, Esther? Because I tried to un. Oh, yeah, you're good now. It's unmuted. So I'm going to turn things over to Esther to share her story. And um, I'm just going to, just one second, I just need to. Okay. All right. So that should work, Esther, if you um, would like to start to share. Thank you. Are you hearing me? I can hear you. Uh, yes, thank you so much for welcoming, for welcoming me. I'm really pleased to be with you right now. Um, by name of Esther Wenjimana from Rwanda. And uh, I really like having this kind of opportunity to speak to such great people like you. I'll start by telling you who I am. Uh, I'm a girl from Rwanda who grew up from a local family. Actually, uh, I would like to start by telling you how I came to meet Shala. Shala found me at my church and when I saw her, I really saw she was a very blessed woman and the way she really welcomed me by hugging me, she, she really hugged me like a person who knew me. So I was very touched by that. And like, I felt there is a very big connection between me and her, of which led us even further to this date. Uh, so as I begin to tell you about my, like uh, my testimony, I would start by, <laughs> telling you from my childhood. Um, I was a kid who grew up without her father's affection or affection or any other family member's affection. I remember my mom told me that uh, my dad left her when I was actually still in, in the womb. She didn't know. I don't know what kind of months I had in the womb, but it wasn't really easy. So as I was born, I really struggled. Like uh, sometimes food wasn't really that easy to get. And my mom wasn't able to really put me in school, get food and clothe me as I wanted. So I grew up like that, willing to know who my father was. Uh, but then as I grew older, I came to know like God is there. As a child, I really had this inspiration, like I'll be a great person. I'll be rich and I'll reach at next end where I will help also those people who are in the same 
condition like ours. It wasn't easy. Like there reached a time where I began even asking myself, oh God, why am I really still existing? Because by the age of six, like I was, I was already thinking like a mature person because I used to see everything around me was really difficult and my mom had nothing to do about it. So when I got seven years old, this is the age when I got in connection with a man called Nyaneza Amani. And this man called Nyaneza Amani really made a great change in my life. Uh, he allowed God to use him. So he took me in, it was an organization. So he helped me going to school. I had to study. He paid my school fees, uh, primary, secondary, and uh, by then I, I had a problem because it forced me and my sister, but then I didn't really have an opportunity to have a good connection or relationship with my sister, my old one, because I am the youngest. So this sister of mine really didn't like me according to how she really was hearing stories from aside because um, we didn't have the same dad, so she didn't really admit me to be her sister. So she was always fighting me all the time. And as I grew up and I reached in senior too, I began having a mind, God, this is not who I want to be. And this kind of sister, she used to drink too much alcohol. And so she could come, start disturbing us, disturb my mom. And it wasn't really nice and it wasn't really pleasing to me. I began begging to God, oh, please, God, help me. So when I reached in senior two, I began taking responsibilities. I was like, no matter how hard it is, I have to take it. So I could, when I used to get pocket money, I was given pocket money. So I used to get the pocket money and give it to my mom so as to, to pay the rent and to eat because I was very sure that the school I'm going at, they had to cook lunch and dinner. But my mom, I also on another side knew that if I don't provide her something to eat, she's not going to eat. And if I don't provide her somewhere to live, she's going to be homeless. So I started like trying to hustle for my family's life when I was in senior two. So, I began struggling. I could go to people, fetch them water, go to people, mop for them, do different kind of things. However small they gave me, I had to use it and help my family. So I studied senior four, five, six. When I finished my senior six, about to go in college. So I sat down and was like, yes, there is something that is missing. I was like, in life, in order to develop in life, you have to take a risk. So my mom was, um, was not living in the same city with me, which was very hard for me to take care of her due to the health, to even healthy conditions that she was in. So I was like, why don't I bring her? And then when I get 1,000, I have to share it with her. When I get whatever, I can send it to her and it's easier for me. So I was like, let me bring her in. So I brought my mom and brought my niece because my sister gave birth to a kid and I really had to take care of her because I had a calling like I was supposed to take care of the kid because she gave birth to others before and they didn't really have a chance to leave because of her carelessness. And I had nothing to do with it because I was still young and unable to do anything. And I wasn't even available by then. 
So when I brought my parents to the same city that I am in, it wasn't really easy. I had to struggle. Uh, I made a lot of obstacles. I made a lot of disturbances, like men trying to tell me, ah, oh, you're still stuck. Why don't you come in and then give you whatever you want? So I had a place to go to work to in town and I worked there, which was really helping me. But then once upon a time, my boss came and said, hey, you know what? If you don't give me what I need, A B C D. So the guy wanted to sleep with me, but I was like, no, this is not what I asked you for. I was like, God, if I'm supposed to go back to the level I was born from, if I'm supposed to really still live in the kind of life that I was born in, if I'm supposed to still live in a poor life like I was born in, let me continue living the same life, but not I going into such dirty games. So I was sent home and became jobless. I had no hope by then. I was really wondering, cause uh, you can also imagine like how you don't have a job, you have a family to take care of, you have to pay school fees, you have to pay others house, if you don't pay others house, they will throw you out. I had to, to provide food and also provide my mom's medicine and their needs too, because they really needed this medicine. So by then it wasn't really easy for me. I was really struggling and struggling. But as the day came on, I really started seeing change because God always provided me a door. And I, I always used to see new opportunities and I was now beginning to have a new hope. So I really, I really had, the only thing that really helped me was I had to, to have confidence on myself. I had confidence, extra confidence. And I had the belief that I am a great person and I'm going to even be a greater person and that I am going to have whatever I want in this world of which I didn't have to go running after people who needed to give me. I was like, God, I'm not going to really lay myself down for people to pass on me so that I can get what I want. No, I'm going to have to work for it so that I can get it and I use it when it's out of my veins not because somebody has told me to do something that he wants and then gives me the money. Because I knew if I pass through that way, it's not going to make me successful as I wanted. And then mm, there was a time like I really felt, God, is this going to happen? So I began praying and praying. I was like, God, I've passed through many things. Because there is time, I felt like I don't want to speak to anybody. I don't want to play to anybody. Like, I really lost even my smile. My smile got lost because I felt like, why should I smile? Like, people should smile because they have something. Like, I used to see my, like my classmates smiling. I'm like, at least they have their sisters who understand them. At least they have their brothers who can sit with them and talk about the problem they have at home. Who do I have? Because my niece is five, getting six. So I was like, should I go and talk to that baby? Should I tell her how burdened I am? Should I tell her how heartbroken I am? Because it was really getting so much into my head. But then I was like, God, you know what? I didn't know that I would reach to this extent. I'm a girl from nowhere. The same guy that brought me from that nowhere. And I can read, speak English, I can write is the same guy that is going to make me successful, is the same guy that is going to give me strength to even become greater. Like, uh, what I would like to tell you, 
all around here listening to me is that whatever you're passing through, whatever you passed through, just have hope and believe. And you should know that whenever you believe, whenever you have confidence in yourself, there is always a way. And you should know that sometimes some doors are closed so that you can get new opportunities because by the time that I lost my job, it had been like six to 10 months when I lost my job. And I was in a very deep pain where I had nothing to spend at all. So God brought this amazing Shala into my life. I met Shala when I was really heartbroken. Uh, every time I saw her, actually, I think she, she, she was always surprised because each and every time we met and I hugged her, I really had to cry. I had to burst and cry because I had seen a shoulder to cry on because she really told me how strong I am. She told me how ever I am. And by now I'm able to dress myself. I'm able to rent my mom a house. I'm able to pay my niece's school fees. I'm able to provide food and their medicine, of which is even giving me hope to even do more than that. Build my house, buy myself a vehicle, uh, and even help other people out there because I know there are people who are even struggling more than I did struggle. Because many kids who grew up in the same situation with me, the same kids who grew up in the same street with me, most of them have three kids. Others have two kids. The ones who haven't produced yet, they are even pregnant. If not, they are in prostitution. I am not among those because I was from a great family or I have something that is special. No, but it's the favor. It's the favor that I was given. And it's the love that people go around giving me. So please, anybody around here, give love to whoever you see is needing that love. Of which I would also talk about there is a time that I really had this feeling of sitting on my own and only crying because I thought crying was my only solution. And I know that there is somebody out there who is really in the same condition as me. Might not even be the same condition, might not be the same condition. Like I was crying because I didn't have a way to help my family because I was seeing my family is in need, but I didn't have a way to, to help them. But there might be somebody else that is crying because they are not receiving somebody who cares. Please care for somebody that you see is in need. Be fruitful to one another. Like, uh, like Shayla have been talking about uh, helping there are some times when you help somebody, you purse and then you find somebody is having a heavy thing and you help that person to carry the thing that was very hard or heavy for her or him. For you, you take it to be a very small thing, but that person will never forget you in your life. So like, please leave a mark on somebody's heart. Leave a remembrance. Leave something that really will really shock somebody's heart and say like, good people are out there. Cause I know there are some people out there who really think that they are not good people anymore. Yet there are some people who are still good and really not them. And I really wanna thank each one of you who is around here. I know most of you are helping me when you even don't know me. Thank you so much. It's really something big.
It really touches my heart. Your help has really changed my life. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for helping me. I really thank you so much. Shala, you really brought a smile back into my life. There was a time where I thought like nobody even cared about me. Like I thought like the whole world really hated me already. Where I could like, I had nobody to turn to because I felt like a family was a better place or better people to run to. And I had none because uh, I really didn't have a father to run to. And I've never known even his family at least to at least run and say this and this has really become difficult for me. So, I hearing that there is somebody out there who is struggling to help me is something that is really touching on my heart. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Esther. Oh my gosh, I was starting with my ball of Kleenex this morning. Um, Esther and I certainly have uh, shared a lot of um, tears, but also some happy smiles as, uh, as well. And it's just such an honor and a privilege to know you, Esther. You're such an inspiring and amazing young woman. Esther goes to university. She's tra taking travel and tourism. She takes care of her mother and she takes care of her niece. And I saw a woman who carried the weight of the world on her shoulders at such a young age and how much she struggled to do that. And all I asked was, God, how can I help? What can I do in some small way? And so uh, Esther and I had some beautiful conversations. And I know the desires in her heart. I know um, her dreams. And she has such big dreams for her life. I know she's going to accomplish them all because she has an army of women behind her who supports her and a God that loves her. And she's so special. She's so, so special to us. And it's why I asked Rhonda to watch today. As you know, I mentioned Rhonda. Um, I didn't know how or why, how I was going to help Esther exactly. I, I pray for miracles every day through one woman. I get them every day. <laughs> so I'm really lucky that way. But what I promised to Esther while I was there is that I was always going to be by her side and I was going to help her in any way, shape, or form. And one of the things that I knew I could do was to bring her here, to tour with me, to put on one moment events, uh, and so that she could always share her fearless story and inspire others. That was supposed to happen this summer. COVID got in our way, but her bedroom's ready. <laughs> and so when things open up again, uh, Esther's going to come and stay with me. Uh, she's going to travel with me. She's going to see all of Canada. We're going to do some inspiring events together. Um, but I knew that financially there was a way we we're going to be able to help her as well. And that was what I was on a mission for when I came back from um, Rwanda was to be able to help um, Esther. And so uh, that happened at the Jacksonville event. We are at the Florida events earlier this year. We started, but it was at the Jacksonville where, event where a miracle really happened. And I was telling the story of Esther. And that's what I love about these online events is that Esther can be on these and share her story and then I can start including the women and girls that we help and empower in this world and that you can hear their stories so that you're not just hearing them from me that you're hearing from the actual women and the impact that one woman has had on their life because we like I said we want to empower every woman and girl in this world and so Jacksonville I watched a miracle happen and thanks to Rhonda who I talked about who's putting on an amazing workshop and get to know Rhonda because she's one of the most amazing women I've ever met in my life. And she came up to me, I didn't know Rhonda. I'd only talked to her via email. And she said, I wanna use my talk, Sharla, to raise the funds to help Esther. And my goal was to raise $2,400 to pay for an internship through Seven Wells, our partner charity, to be able to give her job skills, to get things started so that she had something until she got to Canada to help me. And so that was the goal. And I literally watched Rhonda raise the money from those women in about four minutes. She put the call out, she was deliberate, she was determined, 
and it just flooded in and broke me so bad that I couldn't stop crying for probably an hour afterwards. But the generosity of the women in that room that day still humbles me. And so I watch God work miracles every single day through one woman. Things that I may not be able to do, I don't have a clue how to do them, but I just ask God, you know, and I leave it up to him every day. And so um, I'm so thankful for that. And so I'm th so thankful to each of you. And so Seven Wells is a really special organization to me. Um, I've gotten to know them very well, especially after I visited Rwanda and Uganda. I hope uh, some of you join me maybe in a year or two when things get a little uh, less crazy to be able to travel to, to see the work that they do. But we're working on a new project with them to empower m more women like Esther and like a lot of the moms of the girls that we send to school who struggle. And uh, we found that the best way to do that is through agriculture programs and to be able to help women be able to grow um, vegetables, to be able to, you know, be able to sustain themselves because we believe in empowering women to help women to help themselves. And so we still, we do our um, individual girl sponsorships to go to school, but now we've moved on to also empowering women to be able to start their own businesses and to gain skills and to be able to grow these uh, vegetables and to be able to sustain themselves. And so that hopefully there'll come a day where they can just send their own girls to school and their own children to school and to be able to really um, do all the things that they dream of. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. So every event, we always have a call out, just like we did in Jacksonville uh, when we were able to help um, Esther. Today's event is all about helping those women. We're trying to help 100 ladies to be able to uh, empower their lives through agriculture. I'm going to post the link that if you want to help one of those women, it's an easy way to be able to do that monthly. And uh, I'm going to post that, that if you want to be a part of that, you certainly can. And look at everybody's crying. So that's good. I'm looking at the chat. It's okay. We can start off with a cry and we're going to have lots of laughters and we're going to have some more tears throughout the day. And that's okay. That's the magic of one woman. So I'm going to post that link, but I'm also going to show you a wonderful performance by Esther. We knew that at the end of her talk, she probably wasn't going to be able to sing live, <laughs> so we recorded it. So I'm going to share that screen. You're going to get to hear Esther's beautiful, beautiful um, voice, and I'm going to post the link that if you want to either empower a woman through uh, an agriculture project and helping her start her agriculture business, and I'm also going to spot, uh, share the link that if you want to help a girl go to school. Maybe it's something that calls on your heart more than one or the other. I'm going to post both those links. And if you'd like to get involved, we would love you to do that. And then maybe come and join me sometime to be able to meet these women and girls yourself when it's safe to do so. So I'm just going to reshare my screen again. And so that you can watch this. Let's see what video this is. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow Many times I did
I'm fair.